Cambrian third stage. Warm weather with temperatures averaging 70 degrees Fahrenheit. New type of arthropods were evolving from the megacherans. These new arthropods went through changes in their cephalic region. Their brain ring multiplied its connections. It meant that limbless segments became activated producing extra appendages. It went from having four appendages to having seven. Masticatory basopods or go-narthobases became thick like molars. Gills in the cephalic region lost their functionality. They also became articulated and movable. To breathe, they used their rear appendages, just like the modern chelicerates. But most importantly, the main character of megacherans, the great appendage, became reduced. Three lineages were the first representatives of Chelicerata. Sanctacaris, gills appendages were transformed into an antennae. Very sharp cephalic limbs. All their rear appendages are by ramus. They have a walking side and endopode, and a breathing side the exopode. Cephalic shield and tail had paddle-like edges that probably helped in swimming. First appendage is similar to the other cephalic limbs, spiky and reduced. Habelia, super thick masticatory go narthobases. Uniramicity appeared here, but only halfway into the abdomen. Spines on the dorsal side and long spiny telson. First appendage looked like a regular appendage with a pointy edge at the end. Molisonia, huge eyes that came out of the shield. Spiny dorsal side and telson ending in a paddle. First appendage is transformed into a chelicere. From all three early chelicerates, Molisonia was the one with the most chelicerate traits. This is the reason why it is currently placed at the crown of Chelicerata. Sanctacaris was probably swimming in the water column looking for something on the floor. Then, it ambushed its prey and killed it with its sharp appendages. Super aggressive lifestyle. Habelia was probably walking and digging on the sea floor looking for hidden animals. Its protection was located on the top. Really thick and spiny exoskeleton. Super defensive lifestyle. Molisonia had the paddle-like tail and the spines on the top. It did both things. But their huge eyes allowed it to stay at different levels of luminosity. It was probably looking for something at the sea floor, away from light and predators. A hunter, but also opportunistic and scavenger. When the Ordovician arrived, the descendants of Habelia-like chelicerates evolved into horseshoe crabs. This early horseshoe crab populations, divided again into two groups. The ones preserving two branches in the head area. Similar to the first wave of chelicerates. Cinzophosaurus. And the ones having only one branch in the head area. Ziphosaurus. Cinzophosura fossils are only found in the Silurian record. The next period after Ordovician. Yet, it is believed that early Cinzophosaurus, similar to the Silurian horseshoe crabs, 
evolved in the Ordovician period. The other horseshoe crabs, Ziphosaurus, started to invade the seashore. Ziphosaurus do appeared in the Ordovician fossil record. It is important to mention a Synziphosaura called Cassabelinurus, which seemed to be an intermediate stage between Synziphosaurines and Ziphosaurus. Its cephalic shield began to look like a horseshoe. Its thoracic segments looked reduced. And most importantly, it had eyes. Ziphosaurus had to evolve from Ordovician Synziphosaurus, regardless if not currently present in the fossil record. Similar to the modern horseshoe crabs. The gills were capable of exchanging gases from air if wet. They came to the beach all at once. They molted, mated and left their eggs burrowed. by mid-Ordovician. Merostomates. A broader term to name horseshoe crabs and their relatives. Followed into five categories. Sea spiders. Reduced body. Adapted for life in shallow and abysmal plains. Synziphosaurus. Ophicolis like horseshoe crabs. Miniature borrowers. No eyes. Ziphosaurus. Visible eyes that penetrate the shield. Body divided into two parts, head and tail, because the thorax was reduced. Chasmet aspids. Preserved midsection. And nine segments on the tail, but less appendages. More adapted for walking on the beach and swimming than horseshoe crabs. Some preserved the pincers. Others, transformed their appendages into legs and their sixth appendage into paddle. Eurypterids. The early Eurypterids did not differ in appearance to Ziphosaurus and Chasmet aspids at the beginning. But by the Silurian period, Eurypterids diversified into many types. Stylinurus, conical shape with long legs. Like the Japanese spider crab, Stylinurus probably inhabited very deep waters. Eurypterus, the classic Eurypterid. Lifestyle similar to a seal. Fast on the waters, but heavy on the beach. Pterogatus. Chelicerae developed into a huge claw. They were the biggest Eurypterids of all. Inhabited the oceans and lakes, sometimes, those lakes were hypersaline. The strength of its grip was greater than the coconut crab. It was an ambush predator. Similar to a crocodile. Megalograptus. Third appendage developed into a huge grasping tool. Myxopterus. Very similar to terrestrial scorpions. They even had a stinger. Myxopterus is the most controversial of all Eurypterids. It is so similar with the modern scorpions that it is making difficult the placement of Arachnida. When scorpion appendage configuration and Eurypterid configuration is placed side by side, it is undeniable that at least they have a common origin. Scorpions also evolved in the Silurian period. Fully aquatic scorpions, like Alopaliosphonus, thick body and legs, robust tail not capable of rolling like modern scorpions, robust chelicera. Legs had one claw, instead of two. 
it was probably walking on the beach, but it did not move away from the ocean. Amphibian scorpions. Like Waringoscorpio. External gills suited to obtain oxygen from water. It is believed that those gills were helpful, when water had low levels of oxygen, like in beach waterholes or lakes for example. If it needed to change location, walking out of the water to find a better environment was an option. In the Devonian period, new members of the arachnids evolved out of the terrestrial scorpions. Pseudoscorpions, Opaleones, Trigonotarbids and Euraraneids. Pseudoscorpions and Opaleones are Devonian arachnids still present in modern times. but trigonotarbids and uraraneids are extinct. Trigonotarbids and uraraneids were the foundation for pedipalpi and aranei respectively. Both pedipalpi and aranei are capable of moving their articulations with liquid for better speed. It is believed that this condition evolved in the common ancestor of trigonotarbids and uraraneida. Trigonotarbids, had holes that penetrate the abdomen. They served as ribs. Vinagaroons still have the trigonotarbid rib. The descendants of this lineage were the extinct Haptodata. And the modern, Vinagaroons and Ambulipigids. Uraraneids, were early forms of spiders. Their abdomens were extended with a long telson. Their spinnerets were long and not capable of managing silk. There is not evidence that they were actually capable of producing silk. Mesotheli. Capable of producing silk. Mesotheli is one step closer to spiders, since its telson had disappeared. Spiders were different than the rest of arachnids because they were capable of producing venom and silk at the same time. Mesotheli, increased the functionality of the silk. Silk was used to create cocoons for the eggs. And to secure prey and burrows. Modern spiders appeared beyond, the Paleozoic boundary. They will continue to evolve. Right now I'm recording, okay? I'm gonna say the first question. Okay. Okay. What is the what are the characteristics that define Chelicerata as a group? Well the main characteristic is in the name. It it has the first pair of appendages as chelicery, little little claws. And at the beginning was mention an aquatic scorpion and I don't know if the one is mentioned in the in the article is called um, waiting Ringo Scorpio I don't know that's right. is that the one yeah wearing a Scorpio that's right it's from the Devonian of Germany it was named after a guy called Eric Schelfig Waring who was a Cuban scientist. He, he worked in the oil industry, but was a great Eurypterid and Scorpion enthusiast. So it was named in his honor. Go. So, uh, Molisonia is, uh, is an arthropod that, uh, first of all, has chelicerae, and that's the, the, the first of them for each. Uh, they are clear uh, in the Cambrian and so this is the main character really that uh, places Molisonia, uh, arguably not just in the stem but uh, in the crown part of, of Chelicerata. Um, and then it's also sister group to the true Chelicerates, the Euchelicerates, because it also has these overlapping uh, flaps, exopods, that they reinterpret as a, as a precursor. 
precursors of the of the 